All right. Uh, so we are going to be talking about async and await. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about callbacks and how they suck. We're going to talk about promises and how they're uh, certainly an improvement. And we're going to talk about generators and we're going to talk about async await. Uh, and right up front, I'm going to tell you guys, I didn't have a bunch of time to plan for this. So this is, I'm kind of winging it here. Um, so the things I'm using to do this, and I've got that way zoomed out there. Uh, I, just, I just want to make you aware, there's no framework here, there's no libraries here, this is all just pure native JavaScript running in Chrome. Um, async and await works in every browser except for IE 11 and down. So it works in Edge, Firefox, Safari, Chrome, uh, Opera, more than likely. Uh, so what I'm doing here is uh, I'm just bringing in a script like you would in a script tag, but I've got a type of module. and that allows me to go ahead and use ES6 imports right here in the browser. So again, no framework, there's no transpiling here whatsoever. This is all just pure code running in the browser. I do have browser sync running, which just will give me a little live reload. So every time I make a change, it'll reload. But there's no, this is all, the, what the code you see here is going into the browser. The other thing I'm using is this filtext.com, which is a website I made a long time ago. Um, and it's just a way for me to uh, like do an XHR call and, and get some mock data back. So I just kind of call it and say, hey, I want a list of names or whatever, and it just gives me that back, and it's random, so I just get different information every time. Okay, so that's the setup, right? Oh, there's more. Okay, so um, a lot of times, is anyone like using async await or has learned about it? Okay, so most of the time when you see like a, somebody's going to teach you about it, it's all like a whole bunch of set timeouts, right? The whole thing. And that's helpful, but I wanted this to be a bit more practical. So I came up with this scenario. So I'll try to zoom in and zoom out as it's helpful. Uh, so I've got this task, right? Like some, I think this, is, this looks like a, like, a, like a marketing person came to me and said, I want to report on, uh, you're going to fetch a user, then you're going to fetch the user's friends, then you're going to fetch all their orders, munge all that into a single object, and give me some sort of report UI based on that, right? So this is, I mean, it's not, it's not going to be a set timeout and just like a bunch of examples. Like we're actually going to make that work, like make that happen as if it were our task. Uh, sorry, guys. Okay, so this would be, oh, this would be really cool if we could do this. So what I'm doing there is I'm just saying, hey, I want user to equal get user. <clears throat> and I pass an ID. And that's an asynchronous call. Right now, I'm actually uh, just using XHR for this part of it. Um, so like I say, get user. And then I get that guy. And I say, now get that guy's friends by calling get user friends and passing that user ID. And then I say, OK, now I got the friends. Go get all their orders. Uh, and then again, <clears throat> munge it all together into this object, right? Um, this isn't going to work. Uh, does everyone is everyone clear why it's not going to work? Because it'll keep going. Yeah. Well, sort of. Yes. Yeah. I guess that's kind of true. If we're talking about the same thing. Uh, so the error I get is uh, I can't read the property of ID of undefined at uh, line forty six, which is this guy right here. So the ID that it can't get to is on the user, right? Because I just said user equals get user, and JavaScript just kept on going. It was like, cool, that's what that is. What's this thing? Just moved right on. Um, not capable of waiting for get user to come back with the data first, right? And if I look at the network tab, this should be fun. Uh, I'm just going to reload that guy. So I'll get the same error, but the data did come back. It just didn't come back immediately. So. That doesn't work, right? Um, so the way around that, at least the first way around that, like to actually get this to work the way we want it to work is to use callbacks. Um, I'm guessing everybody is kind of familiar with callbacks one way or the other. Uh, is, that, is that true? Everyone's yeah. familiar with callbacks? Okay, so I'll be real quick here. So the callback pattern um, <clears throat> has been around for a long time. The further back you go, you start to find like, uh, weird little rules in certain languages, like the callback function has to be in the same file, or it's really just a, 
uh, function pointer that you're passing into the to the other function. Um, whereas JavaScript is like perfectly suited for the callback pattern because we can just pass anonymous functions as arguments uh, wherever we want. So it's I mean it's 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 a pretty like straightforward solution to this problem. Uh, so this time, and, and this is just an example, uh, I do have a set timeout here. The pattern is, you know, you pass in whatever data the function actually cares about to, in order to give you back the response you're looking for, and then a callback. And then by convention, uh, that callback is going to be a function, and when the uh, callback function calls your callback that you passed in, by convention it's going to pass in a first argument that's usually representative of an error. Right, so it'll pass an error, and then whatever it is you were looking for, uh, and it's only going to pass in the error if the error actually exists to let you know when you use it. Um, so down here, I'm using get the user, I'm passing in my ID, and then here's my callback, right? And my callback is set up to take in an error and data. And if there's an error, I need to deal with that. So I console error the error, and if not, then then I log the data. So I'll save that and get back to my console. You guys have no idea how big this is on my screen. <laughs> um, so there's my data, right? Uh, I'll just reload that so you see it comes back after the two second timeout. So there's the data. And just for good measure, this is what it's going to look like when we properly handle the error. So that's, you know, that's callbacks, right? It's pretty straightforward. And it's not that bad when, you're, when your code's just that. Uh, this is where it gets really shitty. <laughs> so there's this thing. Has everyone heard of callback hell? Yes. All right. Yes, <clears throat> so this is callback hell. If you're not familiar with it, it sucks. Uh, uh, Pyramid of doom, I think people call it. I've actually, I actually spent the time on this to make sure that I was writing this out in the most concise way I could without losing a bunch of really, like I didn't want to make it really confusing, but I wanted it to be as concise as I could. Uh, so you don't see like a huge pyramid of doom here, but that's really, really common to see. Uh, I, th I think I've heard somebody call it like a Christmas tree of doom or something, because it's, I kind of like that. <laughs> Anyways, um, so this is like the callback pattern, like full blown. This is actually going to work too. Like I'm going to save that. And over here, you know, it fetched all the data we needed and, you know, we got our report. So this is all just, again, using all that fill text stuff, but I got everything I needed. I started with one user, this you know person at the top, and got all their friends, and got all their orders, and the items they ordered, and how much, and I'm totaling all this up. So this is you know a legitimate solution to the task that I, I laid out in the beginning. But man, is it hard to, to follow this, right? So I'm doing get user. I'm using the callback pattern. Uh, the report function itself took in a callback, of course. Um, but get user, all of these XHR calls are also set up with callbacks. So I'm passing a callback into those. This error in user, and if I get an error, then I call my original callback back and send you know send the error, and then I'm building up my object. I'm getting the user friends. Here's another callback. Error handling again. Uh, now we're for eaching over all the friends, and then we got to get their orders, and we got to for each over those, and then we get to this gem, uh, which is like really common, like because um, in all of this, and, and I specifically made the the you know, the, the task that I needed to complete, I made sure that I was gonna have to do some looping in it. Like it wasn't just get this one and then get that one and then get this one, you're done. Because this is super common. You're gonna get back, you know, granted, if you're looking at this, if you're doing this, you need to bitch at your back end people and tell them like, I need a new endpoint that's called, you know, greedy fucking friend report or something. Um, but you do deal with this. So you have to come up with, you know, little things like this that don't look beautiful. But in order to get that where I wanted it, because I really wanted it kind of, in the, in, you know, if I'm going to be a uh, pyramid of dooming out, I want the return to be, you know, in the center of that guy. Um, so uh, I had to figure out when are we done. And that's really the problem that I'm solving here with that line of code. It's like, you know, I need a way to know when this stuff is done because there's nothing here to tell me that, uh, especially, you know, when you start injecting or you start, you know, having uh, loops inside of this, this callback pattern. There's just no real elegant way to do it so i'm just like you know look at the array am i at the end call back right done and then of course you know same pattern down here for using it <clears throat> so that's i mean it works right i don't know if it's in a pinch i guess that'll do right so 
promises. Everyone's up to speed on promises, right? Promises, everybody, most, who, who like have never ever used a promise or heard of a promise in terms of JavaScript? <laughs> All right, so everyone's up on promises. Okay, so, re, so I'll just kind of cruise through this. Uh, I took the same function, the get the user thing that I was showing earlier uh, when I was just kind of showing the callback pattern. And I pretty much just wrapped the same thing in this return new promise, um, which doesn't really solve the callback problem because the like sad truth about promises is they introduce way more callbacks than callback help. They just make it more readable. So a promise comes with two built-in uh, uh, callbacks, resolve and uh, uh, reject. And then when you use it, if you're using it straight out, you have to add two more callbacks in there. It's just we never call it a callback and we don't actually pass the function over there. But we went from a function that takes in a callback to a function that has two callbacks and, and, and we have to be prepared to receive each of those callbacks with two more callbacks. So apparently the solution to callback hell is more callbacks. <laughs> it, it sounds weird, but it's, it's totally true. It's totally true. Um, so all I did here is I, uh, I mean, the only bit I did here that's different is I'm passing in this little fail thing so I can show you what it's like when it fails. But really, you know, you have a promise if everything works out uh, where you would normally just return something, you say resolve, and then you put that whatever you were going to return right there in, in the resolve callback. Uh, and if it's broke, you just say reject. So you kind of separate the whole error from the success call. Uh, and then down here, I do get the user. And uh, promises, or they call them thenables, but this is like, you know, that will finish, and then that dot then is going to get the response from the promise whenever it's finished. So in this case, it is going to succeed because I'm not passing in that little fail flag. So, oh, yeah, that's it right there. So that's my success one. And just for good measure, let's say fail. I'm sorry. I'm going to tell it to fail by passing in true. And then after two seconds, bam, I got my failure, right? Pretty straightforward. Um, so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, especially if you're not super concerned about uh, dealing with the rejection on every single step, you really need to go like you know step one, step two, step three, and then and then giving the data. And if you fail anywhere in there, just kill the whole thing. Uh, this is super common and 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 really very much the way that you should use uh, uh, promises because you can take a promise and say then, and then inside of it you see people do this all the time. They just execute another promise and then say then. And you get like very quickly to a whole new like 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 arrow ahead of doom. Like it's sharp, man. It just <laughs> whoosh. Um, really, what you should be doing if you need to chain a bunch of things together is return a new promise, and then you can do it nice and easy like this. You just then all the way down. So it's like you know, I don't know. There's probably a, a good bad name for this too, uh, like you know, some sort of like inline Gestapo then or something. Like that. <laughs> um, but this looks much better. And then what I'm doing, if you see, you know, if you guys can see all this, sorry, uh, at the end of it, instead of, you know, I'm just dealing with the resolve of all these. Um, if any of these reject, then um, this catch will happen. The the value that resolve passes will just uh, get alerted in my case. So I'm going to save that. We're going to get our good data back in six seconds, I think, right? Because each one's two seconds. Maybe not. No, totally didn't work. Oh, shit, that took a long time. All right, uh, so I got the data back, right? The last one I called was get user three, and that's all I'm doing. I'm just taking, I'm not building these up or anything. I'm just taking the next one and just throw it in, in there. Uh, and then just, again, for good measure, we'll fail that guy. And in some amount of time, I should see an alert that says, uh, you know, <coughs> something doesn't work. Fail to get data from you two, right? So. Any, anywhere in there, if it changes or if, if something fails, I'll just I'll just get whatever failed and I'm and I'm out, right? So that's cool. It's an improvement. I mean, it's way more readable. All right. So one more thing on promises is promise all, which is really cool. So in this one, I'm saying promise dot all. It's a function, and I'm giving it an array. And you can see the array is all the little promises that I just called a second ago. So get the user one, two, and three. This, uh, so promise.all, you can see the then at the very end of that guy, right, will uh, wait until all the promises in the array have completed. 
Uh, it doesn't matter if the second one uh, completes first and then the first one, then the third one. The data that I get back in a successful call is going to be a, an array of the responses from all of those promises in the order that I put them in the array, right? So this one should actually function much faster because they're all going to fire at once. So there's my array. So I got three items, uh, you know, the three responses, right? Nice and easy. And then likewise, if we fail that guy, should get an error. Oh, oh I'm console logging. I thought it was an alert. But yeah, so there's my error, right? It failed. So cool. You guys are all up to speed now, right? This is good. You're with it? Yep. All right. Because we're going. It's coming. <laughs> All right, so here's our promise solution. Uh, so this solves all the same stuff that we did with our callback hell, uh, but it's just promises. And you can kind of see the line there, you know, straight down, then, then, then. And we're doing the exact same stuff. We wrapped everything up in a promise, we get the user, then we get the user's friends, then I'm creating a map of all the get user orders for each of the friends, right? And then those orders get passed into promise all, when those are done, I get the results, and then I do this little bit here to munge it all together in that object that we need. And I have a note here for future Joe, and that is switch to fetch API. So I'm going to switch. I was using XHR for the API when we were doing callbacks. I'm going to use fetch. Uh, it's really just a minor detail, but and let me comment this guy out too. So uh, everyone knows what fetch is. Fetch is it's exactly like a XHR, except it's promises. All right, I see some nods. I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna, you guys totally know Fetch. Awesome. Uh, it's, 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 to say it's, you know, old school Ajax, but it uses promises. So when you fetch a URL, you get back a promise. That's all. Um, so if I save this, it works, right? And it's a little more readable. Uh, <clears throat> It's good. I call it promise purgatory because I don't think there is yet a negative name for this, but I think there will be now that we have async await. Um, but it's cool. It works. Uh, all right. So this talks about async await. All I'm doing is talking about promises. And now we're going to talk about generators. Uh, anyone familiar with generators? Generators? Again, this is in the browser, guys. This is not weird syntax from some, you know, I mean, honestly, Angular, it's not some weird Angular syntax that you have to deal with. <laughs> okay, remember, if you come up here and speak, this is how he treats you. <laughs> I mean the old Angular. The oh, old oh, Angular, oh. not the new Angular. That stuff is beautiful. <laughs> um, all right, so generators. Uh, if you remember in the very beginning, I had an example. I was like, this would be really cool to do, but it doesn't work that way. Uh, because JavaScript doesn't stop. You know, it just moves on past that thing you assigned it to. It doesn't have any, there's no way to pause the execution uh, in the middle of the, the, uh, 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 the execution of a function body. I don't know, that sounds computer science-y, but something like that, right? right? And there's also no way, so the other thing generators gives us, uh, there's no way for a function without, you know, some tricky setup to return uh, more than one value. Like, and I don't mean like a different value because you pass in a different argument, I mean, I call you now, you return me this, and I guess, you know, if you want to say, like, give me the time or, you know, keep track of something on your own, but like a, a plain old function that could return more than one value doesn't really exist, not in a pure sense like this. Like, you would have to do some stuff. You would have to build that. So I am, so, so I've got a function, a generator here, right? I called it gen, but what makes it a generator is this little asterisk after the function keyword. And I don't know if you guys know me, but I hate the function keyword. I hate it. <laughs> you got to use it here. <laughs> um, so that's cool, right? Uh, that, that's all it takes. But what does it do? So you can see I've got yield here, right? I'm yielding one. Yield is just like return. It's just like return, except uh, because I've made this a generator, it's going to come back with like an extra method called next. And when it returns the value, it's going to return me an object. And it's also going to tell me if it has more stuff to return. Uh, so what I'm going to do is like, you know, I've instantiated it. You know, just it just equals gen. You don't have to do a new or anything on that. I'm just going to console log g dot next. Right. 
So I'll try that out. And you can see I got an object with value, and it says done is false. So let's do it again. Now I got two. OK. I think there's a, damn, look at that. All right. Now I got three. It still says done is false, though, which I always find weird. Like, I feel like it should say done is true now, but it doesn't. The next time, I get undefined and done is true. So it's, it's like I'm out of data. You can keep calling me, but I got nothing for you, right? So that's a generator. You can do really cool stuff here, too. So like, um, uh, you can do, oh, this is really neat. So yield can, uh, can kind of be a generator by itself. And anything that follows this can be another generator, or it can be any iterable. Uh, by iterable, I mean, you know, I mean an array. <laughs> so same thing, right? But I'm going to say one, two, three, three, right? Can you guys see that? OK. So I'm going to save that. Bam, exact same result. No way. No way. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. You could do, uh, man, I just want this to be a talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> this was almost a talk about, like, here's a bunch of cool shit you can do in the browser. <laughs> um, so let's do this. I'm going to say, here's another one, right? Gen 2. And I'm going to yield one. No, no, no. Let's do this. I'm going to yield four. Five and six. All right, so let's save that. Bring this up a little bit. And then up here, uh, I'm going to yield gen two. What do you guys think? Is that going to work? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah, so I got four, right? Woo! <laughs> All right, so, sorry, I wasn't positive. <laughs> Six, seven. So dig that, right? So I just yield, <clears throat> yielded an array uh, as a generator, and then I yielded another function as a generator, and then I just called it seven times, and I got those values back. So like, you can really just start kind of mixing this up and come up with some really interesting things for sure. Um, I don't think generators are like the solution for a ton of things. But they are a really interesting building block that I think you're going to see a lot of people doing interesting things with. Uh, I think you'll see a lot of cool libraries come out of this. Like I was looking at it recently, and, and to some degree, I was like, oh, you know what? Everyone loves observables, which are coming to JavaScript. Like I think you could almost build your own observable with this, like uh, much more succinctly than some of the uh, uh, kind of like roll your own observables that I've seen. But whatever. So that's. Uh, Generators and and I'm not talking about generators just for fun. Uh, async and await is a uh, an abstraction of uh, generators and promises combined. So this was the thing that we had in the beginning that we couldn't do because there's no way to stop the execution of function. Blah blah blah. Uh, so I'm just going to show you how we're going to do this. Um, so immediately we're getting the error <clears throat> because. It's, it's a slightly different error because uh, we're using promises now, but it basically got here and said, you ain't got no friends. You know, I didn't get user friends isn't equal to anything or nothing happened there. I, I didn't stop and wait for that thing. So what I want to do here, like, again, this is going to solve the exact same problem we solved with callback hell, the exact same problem we resolved with all the what I promise purgatory. And... Uh, we're going to do it here and try to stay roughly in this amount of lines. And just so you know, the uh, callback hell and promise were pretty much the same amount of lines. There's about 25 lines of code with, with the error handling. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do here is right before my function here, I'm going to add in, not that word, async, right? What does async do to this function? I don't know. I know if you check. The you know the type of it you're going to get async function now, uh, so it's no longer the constructor is no longer a type, like a, a function it's async <coughs> function. Um, the one thing I do know that this lets you do is inside the body of this function I can use another keyword now called await, right? And that's pretty much all I'm going to do here on all these things that I want to wait for. So I'm going to say user equals await get user. 
friends equal await get users friends with that user ID. And then on this guy, I'm going to say wait. And this is that map of promises. So I'm going to say promise all. Break that out a little bit. I think that looks that looks about right. Dude. So, bam, there's our report. And, you know, 15 lines of code, something like that. Very easy to read, right? Like, you can just see what this does, but it looks synchronous. It looks, I mean, you don't see a whole bunch of like ceremonial promise this and that and callbacks all over the place. Uh, it looks like, you know, yeah, just do this line, then do that line. This, I mean, that makes sense. Like, I, I really like this. I think it's way better than the other two solutions. <laughs> um, so one thing I don't have here is any error handling, and that's not fair. So you got to do error handling, right? So same function here. <coughs> oh. I really hate the new Mac keyboards. <clears throat> so, exact same function, except I just wrapped it in a try catch. Like, that's the only difference here, I think. Um, <clears throat> but you'll see down here where I'm, where I'm running report. I'm doing it then. That's the same thing I was doing up here. It's the same thing I was doing after the promises. Uh, <clears throat> await works to the left of a promise. So the thing that follows await is always going to be a promise. And if you give it something that's not a promise, it's going to wrap it in promise.resolve and just resolve the value back. And async functions return promises. So you can kind of mix and match how you want to treat them. Like you can call an async function and then say then. Or you could you know, say await the result of an async function. Like you can just kind of figure out how you want to do it. So in this case, I'm saying, uh, you know, report then send the report over to show report, and if there's an error, catch it. And I think I got this set up the same way, so if I wanted to make an error in the middle of all that, you know, there's my error, I can't uh, move on. So somewhere in that, I hit an error. Like, it's the same idea of, you know, chaining all the promises together, except in this case, I, uh, regular old try catch will do the trick. You just wrap it up, and if there's an error, it'll send it to the catch, and you're done. Um, more likely, what you're going to end up wanting to do, because like once you learn a thing, you got to use it, you know, for everything. Like it's the solution now. Uh, so this one. So now I just made a new function, a new async function, and I'm doing exactly what I said. I'm just awaiting the result of my other async function, and uh, and then I'm still using catch, but I don't have to. I mean, but the, but it, you know, it would get there actually it, if I left that error and did I take that out? Let's see. I think that'll get there. So doesn't this kind of force you into like the cascade of async await? Because like at the heart you have this async function, and then anything that's consuming it. Then <clears> it's the way it's, it's the way all things are. <laughs> if you're <clears throat> if you're dealing with callbacks, your code's going to be littered with callbacks. If you're dealing with promises, your code's going to be littered with promises. You start using promises to call the promises that were already there, and then that grows, and now you got like a whole where now you got to write promises to call those promises that call those promises. That's just the nature of it. I, I, I think you're totally right. I think if you start using async away, uh, away then you're, it's going to end up all over your code. Like, but <clears throat> again, I'm a fan, to be clear, I'm a huge fan. I used it in C sharp and I love it in JavaScript. That's sure. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's 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 a nice solution, and it's uh, I think it's indicative of a lot of cool stuff we're going to see. Um, that is. You know, like generators, when you first see it, it's like, that's neat, but when am I actually going to use that? And then you see async await, and you're like, oh, this is so they can build more cool stuff. <laughs> you know, like, we just needed to get that in there under some sort of, yeah, we need this. You know, it's really useful, even though maybe it's not. Um, and now you get this. And I think we're going to see a lot more stuff like this. Uh, so that's it. That's all I got, I think. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? And I've got time. No. <laughs> so, Joe, have you had a lot of use cases for generators? I've only had one in the, I don't know, couple of years it's been out. <laughs> this first yeah. one. This talk. <laughs> has, I think you said it really well, though. It has very particular use case of when I need a stateful function that's going to return me data sequentially in an async function. Right. Yeah, well, see, now with ES2018, we have <laughs> async generators, mm -hmm. which is a, like a whole new ball of wax. Um, 
I, I just didn't have time to really dig into it. Like, I read it, and I was like, eh, I don't think I'm going to talk about that tonight. Um, Is that what the four async of? Yeah, yeah, there's there's that, and then there's, I don't know, there's a bunch of weird stuff happening. It's, I mean, it's neat, but I, I don't, I have not wrapped my head around the async generators yet. It's probably not as complicated as it seems. Like, the first time I saw generators, the first time I saw async, it didn't really click with me. And hopefully, like, this clicks with you guys. Like, I tried to make this a relatively simple example, because that's all it is. I mean, it's just you add async, and you use a wait to the left of a promise, and you're done. Like, that's it. And then and then you, your, your function is going to pause on that line until it resolves or rejects, and then you just move on to the next one. Like, that's a lot easier. The, the one thing that I've, I've kind of avoided using async because of is because we, like in all the projects I've worked on in the last year or two, we are supporting like later IE 11, IE 10. And, and it's not because, you know, it doesn't matter. We, we'd probably still be transpiling no matter what, uh, at least, you know, a year ago, two years ago. But the transpiling of async from, you know, just this keyword to ES5 is like a whole secondary bundle. <laughs> I mean, it's like a whole mess of code to transpile this for some reason. Um, but again, now it's it's native to all the uh, all the all the browsers. I mean, is I do we still call IE a browser? Is it? <laughs> yeah. I think it's still technically supported. Yeah, until uh, 2025. I what? do, do. I have customers still using IE 10. Don't want. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, so and again, I mean, I think that's another important point. Like, all of this is just in the browser. None of this is a framework. None of this is transpiling or anything like that. Like, you can go home and just start writing the stuff and, you know, see what happens. It's cool. It's cool. It's fun. So I got something. It's more related to fetch. I started using it recently. And maybe you can explain this to me. But I'm used to having promises when I basically, if you don't get a 200 type response, it'll just basically go into the catch of the promise. Mm -hmm. Is it true that now I literally have to check, basically, like it always hits the uh, the resolve callback, and you have to check if it's okay? And I've, I've ran into this a lot. Um, I wasn't sure if there's something... Uh, you just catch right there. Right, but it doesn't... I don't know what it is. Like It's it's almost like that only gets called if it's like an error on like a transport error, but not if it's like a 500. Uh, is, which, so the way that I'm actually creating errors is I'm... I'm uh, I can kind of show you. So the, the, I'm, I'm generating 503s. So the errors that you're seeing that I'm I'm getting back in my thing is even though it just shows the text, it actually so the fill text thing you can tell it to give you an error, and you just tell it what code, and it'll actually give you an error. Hmm. So the errors you were seeing in my promise chain or in the async, they were the result of a 503. That's That's so is that when you're doing the talk on fill text? Oh, because the code behind that is embarrassing. <laughs> That's the first Node application I ever built. And I, and I was like, uh, and I ain't using nobody's library. I ain't using none of this NPM shit. <laughs> you know? And so it's just this monolithic nightmare that doesn't get updated and, get, and crashes all the time. Like, I get tweets from people like, full text is done. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cool. Anything else? Anybody? Anything? We're good? Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to start. Thank you, Joe. <laughs>